This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to get geeky with the awesome cast episode 349. The craft beer is floating, the dudders are being chewed on, and we're ready to bow tech and catch it. <laughs> the faces I'm getting right now. That happens, that happens to your other job, I think. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm Mike Sorgat Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Mayhem Studio in Pittsburgh, PA. Finally, after two weeks, we're back. We're back on Tuesday. I'm not sick anymore. I'm in this time zone. It's fantastic. Um, but uh, with us, we got the whole crew here and, and then some. Uh, of course, John Chichilla in studio this week. In Studio E, he is the AA, Studio A. I don't know where Studio E is. You don't want e. to know. That's where Sawtooth gets recorded. Uh, <laughs> of course, he is the Gadget Guru with Big Bank International Esquire. How you doing, Chilla? Pretty good. How are you doing today? Amazing, amazing, amazing. Glad you're feeling better. Yes. Also with us over there on the couch, it's Uncle Crappy, Mike Pound. Of course, uh, dr- journalist type. Dr- uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> with the uh, Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Of some variety. With the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. I'm a, I'm a journalist of this variety. Yeah, there you which go, is, of the beer nice. type. Um, and, of course, the great Beer Me show over on the Post-Gazette. What was that you were holding up there for the people um, curious at uh, home? Our, our uh, neighbors, the Post-Gazette's neighbors on the uh, North Shore, uh, Southern Tier, Pittsburgh's Brewery. This is a can of their locally brewed Pittsburgh Oatmeal Porter. Um, it's a lighter porter. Uh, the oats give it a, a ridiculously creamy mouthfeel. Mm, um, as, I'm as, loving that as, mouthfeel. By the way, I want to point out, I am drinking uh, the porter from a, a Michelangelo Ninja Turtles cup. <laughs> Because that's how we roll in this mother. That's um, outstanding. Yes, yes. So, how, how else am I going to drink beer? Yeah, that's perfect. Let's be that's honest. Perfect. Uh, also, with hey, Katie Dudas is here. Uh, the Dudders of and the of the, cookie, and the Dudders of the cookie namesake. <laughs> There's the cookie. There's the Dudders, <laughs> and she ate herself. Uh, <laughs> social media. This is why I come to the show, man. Social media peeps over at beer the Scarehouse and the Great Scarehouse Podcast on this very Sorgatron Media Network. It is. It is fantastic. Yes. <laughs> it's hugely fantastic. And of course, on the ones and twos, producer Missy, keeping things straight over there. Uh, you can check her out over Begas Flaw on the Twitters. You, you want to say something? <laughs> oh, I'm saying stuff too. Okay. Yes. Sorry, I was looking down here to see what I'm producing. You got a live mic, so. <laughs> you were the idiot that did that. <laughs> well, there we go. Uh, like I said, this is the awesome cast. We talk tech. We get geeky with uh, people around Pittsburgh doing different things with media and technology. As you can see by this uh, uh, varied panel here with us this week. Uh, of course, myself doing podcasting and video production as well. And uh, sometimes going to very middle of nowhere places to do it lately. So that's been a lot of fun. Uh, so you can follow my adventures on social media. But of course, you can check us out at awesomecast.com. Uh, you get this and so many other shows that we're doing in the Awesome Cast Network. You can subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and the video versions on the Awesome Cast YouTube and Facebook page. And we're live streaming on live.awesomecast.net or the Facebook Live at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Time every Tuesday when I don't have a problem. Uh, <laughs> every week going on there. And, of course, we're also on riversedgepgh.com and the 405media.com. Those guys are streaming us. Um, 405 is doing us, uh, I believe, so still uh, five days a week at, uh, I think it's 9 a.m., pacific time which is noon here on the east coast uh and of course river's age is still uh, has us running on thursday mornings 8 a.m after funny money thank you so much to those guys for supporting us and get us in front of more people uh to, to help spread the awesome cast also a big thanks to the people supporting us on patreon.com slash awesome cast at the coffee club five dollar a month level matt weller as well as mike fedor show at the fan of the show dollar level thank you so much guys for supporting the show and uh showing that that you know it's worth it's worth putting your money into it. And thank you, everybody else that shares the show, that that that, that, that interacts with us on the chat room here on Tuesday nights and everywhere else. Uh, really, really do appreciate it. Um, 
<laughs> uh, Aaron has, has has requested that you save him some dudders. So there you go. <laughs> Is he coming in for 205 Live? I hope so. I Ooh. certainly hope so. Uh, so let's get into it with our awesome things of the week, because I think that's what we do on our show. Uh, first of all, hey, let's go with our guest this week, uh, Uncle Crappy. Mike, what is your awesome thing? Um, as, as you guys are, are aware of by now, um, Roger Moore, who was the second uh, James Bond and the longest tenured of all the actors who played James Bond, uh, passed away this morning, as his family announced. Um, and, and I came across a thing that CNET did, which is a, a really kind of cool look at, and it's very, this is really time capsule-y. It's a, a, their, someone's opinion of the coolest Roger Moore James Bond gadgets. Hmm. Um, and it's, I say it's time capsule kind of in the sense that, you know, we, we have our gadgets now and, and, uh, um, obviously some of the stuff that, that would be, that would be considered fanciful or, uh, really futuristic. Um, he was, he was James Bond from the early seventies into the mid eighties. So, um, so things were different then. And the one that, the one that really struck me was, um, the, uh, the, the Casio watch. Um, I, I had one that was like that when I was in junior high school. Um, I don't think it shot darts at anything. If it did, I didn't find that button ever which is probably good. Um, but it really, I swear, I swear to God, it looks like the same watch. Um, I just found the Rolex so far. Yeah, it's, 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 it's there's a few watches. Oh, there are, there are a few watches. Um, the, the underwater Lotus, uh, that, that was such a cool thing. Um, but it's just, it's a cool thing to get. It's just, it's a slideshow on CNET. Uh, and it's interesting to, to go back and see what passed for, um, you know, just ending in 1985, which was the year I graduated from high school, what passed for high tech, gadget weaponry back then um and uh rest in peace mr moore yes, sir sir moore sir moore absolutely and 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 also also I, I love you know kind of that perspective of we come to like kingsmen these days where they're like oh yeah most of that technology it, we, we we all kind of have it now and just yes. uh, you you get an oh, iphone yeah. and yeah. regular stuff now, yeah so. yeah because what else do you need the uh, the Casio the Casio watch even if it did shoot um uh you know poison darts at people would be uh kind of primitive right now. Mm-hmm. There are more effective there are more effective ways to <laughs> dis- disable people these yeah, days. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, um, awesome, awesome. Go check that out on CNET. Thank you so much, uh, Katie. What is your? <laughs> 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 and then I read it, and then I know. This is going to be fun. <laughs> Parking kitty. Parking kitty? Yeah, it's in Portland, unfortunately. Mm. Just Portland right now. But um, uh, there's an app called Passport. It's one of the largest parking payment vendors in the United States. They kind of build it off that. And it's called Parking Kitty. So it's just a cuter version of a parking app. Uh, it purrs whenever you pay. And when you're about, the meter's about to expire, meow. <laughs> <laughs> so they just wanted to do something kind of really cute. Instead of just like, I don't know. Our, par- our parking app. I mean, it's functional. Thank you, Pittsburgh, for having a functional parking app. I mm-hmm. love Finally. our parking mm-hmm. app. Yeah, it's the best one ever. But this one is adorable, so now we're going to have to step up our game. By Since- the way, so some we a friend of the show did just recently move to Portland. Rob, Rob or oh, is yeah. Rob, Rob De La Creta mm-hmm. move is in is or has moved to uh uh portland so mm-hmm. we may have to get a ground report so yes of, of the parking kitty yeah yes yeah, so and, tweet and, him and say let's let's go visit him yes the child parking kitty yes. and, and and also i believe portland's on my agenda for 2018 yes so you already need parking kitty so hopefully the parking kitty lasts until then and then you can check it out there yeah i mean it's not really it's not a huge difference besides just the fun noises and it's called parking kitty and who pa- wouldn't want a parking kitty parking to check yes. that out that's a lot of fun Adorable. It's awesome. Um, so I, I've been really kind of diving into the virtual reality a bit more. I've been uh, digging up my, my the Gear VR. Thanks, Chilla, for hooking me up with the SDK version of that. Mm-hmm. I actually have on order the touch control, the the wand, whatnot, that they, 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 they have out now. They, so, they have them on sale, too. I saw them at Target. Yeah, they were, well, I got, ended up getting an open box for like 34 bucks oh, cool. um, out of Best Buy. Mm-hmm. So this should be here like Wednesday or something by the time I get back. Uh, or after I get back, actually. Uh <laughs> I'm sorry. I just saw. I just looked down and saw porn time um, from from Matt Weller in the chat room, 
And it just threw off my entire whatever I was talking about. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> see, this is the thing that you can do to participate live. Uh, so, <laughs> yes. Uh, but but anyways, uh, so so Google had um, they had Google I.O. last week, of course. And there was a lot going on. Uh, but uh, amongst them, uh, I think day two, it wasn't even a day one thing. And I haven't really di- dived a lot into the the VR side of things. Uh, but uh, thank you and Gadget actually they're, they're really good about doing these recaps like here's everything you need to know in like three minutes of this topic from from uh, Google VR and, 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 and for them you know they have Daydream which is like the, the Gear VR kind of thing um, I'm iffy because now it's another platform for you to purchase games on so and I'm kind of concerned will my games I buy on Gear, Gear VR proceed am i going to get you know teched out of this thing you know do i need to go buy a new gear vr at some point i'm not a samsung user uh but uh but they're moving forward and they're uh going to be uh partnering with uh htc vive as far as the platform goes as well as uh, lenovo and qualcomm on some technology around it they had some really cool stuff like uh pretty much you know if you're using a google phone or android phone uh, the notifications are a little smarter now uh, they uh, brought in um, a really cool technology called Surat, Sur- I believe it is, where it's it's proposing to take desktop level your Oculus, your HTC Vive graphics, and bring them down to a cell phone level. And I guess they're taking snapshots of that. You know, when you render something, usually in a game, it renders the whole scene, whether you see it or not, whether you can see behind something or not, the polygons rendered, right? So they're taking snapshots of that. So they only have to show you a little bit at a time, uh, which, you know, it, which should be pretty good. They actually showed a demo of uh, a scene from Rogue One that made it look, you know, pretty good on a phone like that. So I'm, I'm guessing if the phone maintains the OS, mm-hmm. which I mean, if you think about it, the S6 that you have, if you put a SIM card in that, it'll upgrade to Nougat because okay. Nougat's supported on that. So if the phone stays current, I'm guessing you'll get 12 months past the last OS. So for instance, Nougat came out last year, but it released mainstream on phones half part way through this year, like in Q1, February-ish. Um, <clears throat> I'm guessing if they don't upgrade to the next drive. You probably got a good twelve months left on that. Okay, um, and, and, and that and that for that phone, that's a that's two years plus. Is it S six? The S eight just came yeah. out. That's not bad. I mean, all I'm doing it, all I'm using it for is VR too. So, yeah. um, and and, and I, I I know this is a stopgap until whatever that next thing is. Uh, Chachi, who's who's been in the chat room, I, I think he is. He's been using the Gear VR. He got the new one with his S8, has been using it with the S7. And um, I think he is looking at a PlayStation 4 VR because that's the next step, the, the next logical. It, it is that introductory thing. Mm-hmm. So, And it is nice because I don't have to have this giant setup going on or a dedicated computer or anything like that that I don't really have available. Uh, so if, if really you already have the, the, sorry. Mm-hmm. If you already have the device, think about it, it's 130 dollars yeah. on top of whatever you're doing or if yeah. you're using daydream i can't remember what the cost of daydream is but to get the the headset and the remote control from samsung i'm pretty sure it's 130 and there's a lot of bundles right if you get the phone you sometimes you get the yeah the headset for free so i, I think it's like that nat to to your point it's like the natural progression but and it's phase one right it's and even as barrier to entry daydream was i thought um supposed to open up to more platforms and I, like including iOS, I thought, mm-hmm. and I haven't seen that yet. I haven't seen that yet so. either. But it is it is supposed to. And I think where you're going to see that first is with the 360 video. Okay. So they talked a lot about 360 video coming to the TV mm-hmm. as part of the YouTube app. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you're going to see that's probably going to be their first steps in to to the daydream using the the iPhone as its device internally. Well, it'll be interesting to see what they uh, what they do with this. But uh, again, it, it just the 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 uh, virtual reality is kind of uh, baby stepping forward, and it's it's cool to kind of follow that along and see what games are com- coming up. So awesome, Chilla! What is your awesome thing of the week? I, I feel like there's a movie title that goes with this. <laughs> Thirty six days later with AirPods. So I ordered the AirPods, and it was the six week wait time. And mm-hmm. I, I was going in, in and out of the store like, hey, do you have any in? It was constantly, are you kidding me? Um, 
I actually went into an AT and T store, and they're like, "Yeah, we won't be getting those anytime soon. Not even a one." Um, so I I finally bit the bullet, put in the online order, six weeks wait time, um, <clears throat> and they arrived. It didn't take the full six weeks; it was like five and a little bit. Um, I have to say, I'm pretty darn impressed. I think they're a little thicker than your typical, uh, what is it, the ear pods. So they do stay in, no problem. So if I take it, take these and put them in, I can shake my head. Mm -hmm. um, like I just heard it, it, it are, just putting it into my ear, it instantly paired to my phone. Um, so I heard a little ding. I do like I can take it out. I've actually read this week that some people were using these as remote mics. For recording things, hmm. so you know how you were you like you know how sometimes you take your phone and put your your earbuds up yeah. there with the mic, yeah, just to get a backup recording or whatnot. Yeah, a lot of people are just throwing this on a stand or on the podium, right? Huh. And using it as a Bluetooth recording device because it's <laughs> and they're not worried about people walking off with it. <laughs> well, I I think if you're doing the video and the recording for so. something, yeah. They they kind of know it is not you put it in the front of a room and walk away with yeah. a room full of people, right? So, oh wait, wait, wait go, go pull. The, the bigger thing in a news conference is like it doesn't fall off the podium when someone steps on it. Oof. That would be that would be bad. But that's Oof. yeah, that's yeah, really. Kind of, cool. We're all like, ooh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's really hey, every cool. one of us thought of an application for that <laughs> right, right away. We're like, I could do that for hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but that 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 quality is pretty decent. Then the, qual for, for the quality is pretty decent. I talked to some people on the phone, and I'm like, "Hey, can you tell me? Can you tell mm -hmm. that I'm on like anything different from a normal noise canceling headset?" And they're like, "No, you sound fine. Mm -hmm. If you wouldn't have said anything, I would have wouldn't have guessed you were on anything different than normal." Um, which it's the same um, headset I use for they comparing and contrasting it to the same headset I use here when I'm at home. Mm -hmm. um, which I, I find pretty good, um, especially like it's what I use to record a lot of, of things for work. So, um, no, I've been totally happy. Uh, I will say, listening to music, I get like twice the battery out of one than I do when I'm on the phone and trying to do a bunch of other stuff. Um, but obviously, you throw it back in this and it makes a nice little click. Um, magnets. <laughs> magnets amazing it's magical Wait, and it, it, it has a little it has a little green light up there that tells you it's charging um and 15 minutes and it's pretty much charged back to max capacity so <laughs> that's so kind of the cool part we talked about this i kind of him and hawed over the cost of these things because they're still how much right 150 now 150 dollars so if you want 100 now by the way i just lost my ear pods on a trip last week uh, so so you know, it, and then it, worth it for the 150 bucks. Definitely worth it for okay. the 150 bucks. Um, the the big thing for me was I actually started wearing kind of like the molded in ear headphones, mm -hmm. so I could hear when I was waiting for the train and there was a bunch of loud noises behind me. I can wear these in traffic around the train running, etc., and I can hear everything perfectly. Um, so that was kind of what definitely sealed the deal for me and another metric Matt, matt's in the chat room asking um considering the decent pair of headphone or bluetooth earbuds can be uh had for 30 to 40 dollars and i know you get your ears on a lot of these <laughs> over the course of things is it is it an, enough better to justify that increase in price so the question i would have is yes you can get a decent pair of bluetooth earbuds for 30 to 40 dollars are you using those earbuds to talk on the phone? If you're just using them to listen to music, I would say it's probably not worth your 150. But if you're using them as an actual headset um, and talking on them, I would say yes, because that's where I think the differentiator is for even these is it will figure out which side of your head there's more background noise coming out and switch the mic to the other side. Mm -hmm. So, that's where I think the difference between your thirty to forty dollar Bluetooth. If you just want to listen to music, okay, cool. But if you want to talk on the phone and record or do anything else, I think that's where these types of devices shine. I, I think that's a big thing to consider is that that cost isn't just for for an earpiece and microphone configuration. There is an independent CPU in these that is doing mm -hmm. a lot of that work, is doing a lot of that motion control. Um, there's a lot of talk about. 
uh, it pairing with you know that whole ecosystem of your iPhone and your Apple Watch, and and just kind of being a piece of that interaction to some point. So if, if you're just looking for headphones that do X, no, right? Mm-hmm. But if you want that kind of whole piece of the puzzle about you know, a lot of those features that you talked about, then the, that's enough that seems to justify. And it's, I feel like there's going to be more on the way that these are going to be able to do. Yeah, and the other thing, too, is when I think about it, so I've used the Plantronics uh, Voyager Legend, which is a very high-quality Bluetooth earpiece, retails fully built out, and we've reviewed it on the show, I think, both the, the last models. That's a $150 headset. Um the, the pieces that come into play to that is that it comes with a charging case, much like this. Um, so you're getting more than just the the typical, here's a button, here's a small mic that doesn't sound that great, etc. Um, the, the one thing I will say, and you kind of have to make up your mind and what you want to do with this, um, you have to pick, like, you can tap on the headphones and it either activates Siri or there's another setting where it's like your play pause. So if you're used to the single click to pause, double click to fast forward to the next song, three clicks to go back, you're pulling out your phone to, to hit those kind of controls. Right. Um, that is one thing I missed. The other thing I will say that I think Apple needs to figure out how to do this, those the higher quality headphones that run that may not be in the $30 to $40 range, I don't know what, what the specs are on the $30, $40 ones that you're looking at, being able to connect to multiple devices um, these don't support dual device configuration. You can bounce from a device to another device to another device, but with other headsets, I've actually had it streaming my music from my phone and connected to my computer to take like a phone call. Um, this won't pair to two devices simultaneously. Um, if the 30 to $40 ear, uh, Bluetooth earbuds that you're looking at can do that, and that's something you're interested in, that's something you won't get out of this. But I will say it's kind of cool. I have my phone there, and I'm listening to music, and it's battery's dying. I can just lay on the charger. I can walk for pretty much all around the house with these. And also, if I my my I have voice over IP for, for work on my laptop, um, I get a call. I just go up to the Bluetooth and say connect, and then pick up the call. And it's, it's a seam. It, you do have to say activate airpods on the other device to get it off the first but it's it's not hard and you pair it to one device and every apple device you log into it's there and you're done there's no and when you open it is true i mean when you open up the case the very first time when you pull it out of the box your phone just goes new airpods you want to connect (laughs) is that magical pairing it does just like it does with the apple the apple watch and everything like that that's cool that's cool uh, so there you go. There's some thoughts on the uh, the AirPods, uh, if you can get your hands on them, and whether you should or not. I, I, I hope they're just boxed in with the iPhone 8 at this point. <laughs> That'd be nice. Um, hey, it may be the point that you can't do a lot with without them. You know, if, they, if it feels like they might kind of go that direction with things. So, All right, I want to talk about a little bit of social media, some interesting things going on out there in the world. Uh, some game-changing uh, uh, things being announced. But in the meantime, I want to give a shout to our friends over at Slice on Broadway, our good friends bring, uh, supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the Perfect Pepperoni Pizza for a good while time. Now I, I love to see people uh, uh, talking about uh, stopping by Slice on Broadway. Now Pirates are in season at PNC Park. I, I know, I don't know, Uncle Krabby, you uh, you are very, very close to the Slice. My That's my other north side neighbor that I visit as often <laughs> as I can. <laughs> Um, we just we got pizza there last week, in fact. So yeah, it, I'm, we're, we're we're very happy that they're there. Yes, absolutely, and we're happy they're here in Beachview, the original slice on Broadway, right on the tracks here in Beachview, uh, right down the way from here. And uh, you check them out; it, it, it's, it's good, high quality stuff. Sliceonbroadway.com, pgh underscore slice on the Twitter. Let them know that the awesome cast sent you. All right, let's talk about some social media. And and, and Katie, uh, maybe I'll, I'll, hop, I'll pop to you for this one. Uh, Doug had shared something in our Slack about Instagram's latest uh, latest uh, 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 announcements, I guess, and upgrades to, to the app. Uh, have you been following this? Uh, 
Not as I didn't read this particular article. Okay, Sorry. I read another right. article that's I was like, Whoa, what's oh, this okay. I want to get to the one that you you were telling us about earlier. So so basically, what happened is, um, and I'm just going to use beer me as oh, okay. A, oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> it's very similar to what Snapchat just rolled out. Which it, is, okay. Yeah, they're very okay. So yeah, that's why I'm confusing the two in my head because they are so similar mm -hmm. in their rollout. Uh, the news stories, um, you can actually look in a particular area. As opposed to, like, you'll have a location stories. It cut, pulls up content from Instagram users um, in your area. So instead of just, you know, randomly looking up stories. Oh, sorry. I hope this ad doesn't pop up. But, um, which is very much what in, uh, Snapchat just released a few days ago, too. Or I think last week. See, I feel like Snapchat's had for a bit this this idea of, of like you know, special events or location kind of stories going on, right? Yeah, but, but but I think the biggest difference was they were curated and these are mm -hmm. not. Yes. Right? And I thought this new Snapchat feature, you could lock the story to a location. So if you weren't in that location, the other people, other people that follow you can't see it from Snapchat. And you could also set stories to only share with specific individuals. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Is that different from what... Well, there's a Instagram's couple. not locking it, are they? They're just giving you location-based sharing. Mm -hmm. Like you're, the, if someone follows you on, if your if your profile on Instagram is locked, and someone follows you and you create a location-based story, everyone that follows you can still see it, right? Yes. So on Snapchat, I thought the deal was that you could actually lock it to. A location and if that person wasn't in that location they could not see it Ooh, I'm not sure and you could also take stories and you could build a story in snapchat and say I only want these six people to be able to see that's it. the new new thing that yeah. was the thing with snapchat like that just the came out new thing today thing. yeah the yes. new and that, that location <laughs> thing I think is new 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 today as no the location thing I had pop up in my snapchat a few days ago, because I okay. was kind of confused. Uh, because, it, for example, I was checking out uh, the Nashville Predators just uh, finished out their series, and I was watching all the celebrations from Nashville. Um, yeah. They don't. They don't matter for rain. I don't. I, I'm not being too. Opti I don't want to be overly optimistic. No, I think a lot of people are being very you, overly optimistic, and you it's don't frustrating. Don't want to do that. But um, but it's yeah. But the thing, the new new thing was the, the you can create um, the stories within just certain groups. So it would be like I'm having if you're having a party. This is my this is Dutter's birthday party, and I'm inviting just my friends to participate, which is nice because I think then you can download the stories later, and then you're like, look at my little story. We all share this out on my day. A with. little bit of everybody's mm -hmm. story. So you can curate awesome. your uh, event, which is nice because a lot of times we've repurposed Snapchat stuff and other platforms. You just download it and mm -hmm. distribute it. That's, that's just one of those things whenever you do things like that. Don't leave your things up for eight seconds if it takes you like two seconds to read it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do not make your snap like eight to ten seconds long when it takes you two seconds. Or drop a paragraph in a ten second one like yeah. some people have been doing. So Yes, I'm seeing a lot of that lately. I'm like, yeah. you guys do realize. Yeah, yeah. Make sure make sure it's readable. Make sure we can consume this. So, so again, it seems like they're, um, you know, Instagram and, and Snapchat are kind of back into this feature war. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very very one to one this week it seems. Yeah, like like it's like the fact that we're confusing which one is doing what. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Brandon is asking from the chat. It's like Facebook stories. Oh no! Don't get me started on that. Because <laughs> <laughs> that damn camera I keep getting into by accident and been trying to figure out what the hell I did every freaking time. Uh, so it's if you. The camera is in the upper left-hand corner, and you mm -hmm. can tap it. Mm -hmm. You can also swipe your finger to the right, mm -hmm. yes. and it puts right. you into yep. camera mode. When yes. You're, yes. Yes. Well, yes, but then I end up in camera and try to remember how the hell do I get it out. And swipe it's right. In, and it's in, swipe No, there's an left. X in the corner, I thought. But you can also and, swipe. And, and, oh, jeez. <laughs> you can swipe in and swipe out. But you, we're swipe. getting this part. Swipe so, or quit swipe. So Snapchat <laughs> had this thing. <laughs> Snapchat had this thing where you jumped in, you're in a camera, God, what do I do next? And there was a barrier of entry, right? Now, I'm talking on my on my thing, sorry. Um, stop, stop me. Stop, stop. Oh, you got swipes. Stop, stop. Yeah, th there you go. So, so we're good. <laughs> Where's pause? There we go. Um... 
it was me. And I'm looking down at me, figuring out how to turn me right. off. It shows sword. how long I was doing it. That sword, that's good. <sighs> What are we talking about? Snapchat. Um, no, you Facebook. get you get in there. No, no, no. But the Snapchat. I'm getting to the point. Snapchat. You get in there and it's like, what do I do? Where do I swipe? Where do I start? Now you have Facebook with more, which more of the general populace uses, and then they get stuck in the camera, which has the similar problems or, or features, I guess, as as Snapchat. And I think it's going to be more frustrating for people than anything. Like me, when I'm tired and on a job and trying to do a Facebook post and end up in the camera and just get mad. Hulk smash. I'll be sort of smash. That's right. Um, yeah, there's that. Anyways, other stories going on. Anything else on that? Anybody else? Uh, Katie, what, yes. what, what do you find more value in? Mm. Um, I'm, I'm curious in, if, you're, if you're comparing Snapchat and, and, and the, the new stuff in Instagram. Personally, um, I like Snapchat because Snapchat to me is just like do something, send it out, no thought hmm. or limited thought, I guess. And, and it seems like every other social media platform I'm on, there's thought behind what I'm doing. <laughs> Snapchat's more a little like me just going, look at this, <laughs> done. But um, I do like Instagram stories. And um, just the the live videos. I've been having so much fun at Scarehouse with the live videos, mm -hmm. just goofing off. Mm -hmm. And and like it's like, hey, we're we're dancing in the hallway, or and it's uh, they're very short live videos, and we're getting so many reactions to them because people are just like, oh look, mm -hmm. normal humans. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it just depends on what I'm doing, I think. But personally, I, I like Snapchat as far as like just throwing fun stuff out. Okay, those are both those are both platforms. I, I struggle with how best to use them. For, for my stuff, I mean, I, uh, Facebook Live seems to uh, seems to be an appropriate thing. Like if I'm at a location, I can talk for briefly about what I'm shooting and, and what's going to be coming. Um, I have a hard time trying to figure out what to do with the others. So something something to, to think about more. Yeah, yeah. Well, the Instagram. I've been doing Instagram Live a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and I feel like that's just the very kind of localized group mm -hmm. gets those anyways. Mm -hmm. um, and it's all it, it, that's where I put my work cam basically these days okay. because I'm editing things. It's nothing I want to stay because mm -hmm. it's just me editing a project. But I just kind of want that streaming. Hey, this is what I do every day. You know, yeah. kind of thing to go on. Um, um, I think a lot of it's like, where is your audience and what audience are you trying to reach? Yeah. yeah. With yeah. a lot of that too. That's, uh, that, that's another thing that to think about. I'm, and I'm not sure Snapchat's the right place mm -hmm. for, for the beer show. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, they I, I could, I could be wrong about that, but, um, there's a decent, you can probably find the audience there, but mm -hmm. it'll be a lot of work. The, yeah. the, the problem is yeah. the barrier of finding audiences has been my biggest thing about Snapchat. Yes. Instagram less so. Mm -hmm. But Instagram, yes, when it comes to like the live thing. Yes. So stories, I think, work well. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm seeing, uh, and again, it's all familiar faces for the most part. But still, like, I'm able to repurpose that and put that out in other formats. So it's more of a tool than the platform mm -hmm. at this point. And then something we've been doing is with our Facebook Lives, we're downloading them and they're putting them on a YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that's another option of just like trying yeah. to use right, like like what I'm doing with the Instagrams. Like mm -hmm. I, we, I do that. Here's my here here here's a day in my life mm -hmm. on a project, and then I spit that out to Twitter and Facebook, right. so the more general people can see what that was so which really really works when I'm on these like day shoots like for for a client or something, and there's a whole like like set of things for a shoot mm -hmm. that that are sequence that mm -hmm. I'm I'm uh, journaling I guess you can call it yeah so yeah so um also let's touch on uh, uh Mike you had a story in here you were curious about um about split screen vid and uh, um. And I think we, we talked about this kind of briefly on on your awesome chat recording. Yeah, earlier. and on and this is kind of along the same lines. Um, you know, as I as I kind of think about different ways of of reaching folks who pay attention to the beer show, um, as I said, Facebook Live is 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 one. Um, I'm I'm actually I'm I'm much more apt to use that now than I I, I did this with uh, with Periscope for a while, um, and that's sort of fallen to the wayside. Um, but there are there are some changes coming to. Uh, Facebook Live, one of which may not be a big deal for me, um, and that is uh, inviting people into a, a essentially a private chat. Um, mm -hmm. So as you're as you're uh, watching uh, something happen, uh, you and a group of people can kind of 
come and uh, do your, your own commentary there in your, in, uh, in privacy. The other thing is that um, the possibility of bringing other people into uh, an actual Facebook live stream. Um, and I was thinking I, there could be applications of this for the beer show, but I'm thinking more about, uh, about the Carla and crappy show, which is a, uh, a uh, fun, it's a, a college football thing that I do with uh, my friend Carlos Swank, our friend Carlos Swank. Um, that's weird. You know, we're always kind of wondering about platform and what is going to work best. Mm -hmm. um, and Facebook is, if, if there was a way to do all of that within the Facebook structure, that might be a smart thing for us to do. So that's, that's something I'm curious about the, uh, the ability to, uh, to uh, have a kind of a side by side chat, um, and and maybe that maybe that's how we do the uh, the football shows in the future. Yeah, if there's something that that kind of does that that Google Hangout sort of thing mm -hmm. on Facebook, I think that's a killer app. For yeah. Them. yeah, I mean something that that, that at that point you're doing um, much like Google Hangouts kind of provided this all encompassing. When I'm not here, the mm -hmm. guys get on Google Hangout and they can do a show. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. like we were talking about, you bring that down, you add the you know the flare on it and and and, and clean it up a little bit, and and you have a show. Easy. That's and it. It's easy. That's it. Um, and especially if uh, you know Facebook, and it looks like this is a possibility. You know, Facebook is going to be the full time home for that show when we start it up again in the fall. Um, boy, it would be really nice just to do everything within that structure. Mm -hmm. um, and that 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 would, that would be a big deal uh, for us, and, and I assume for for others. When you when you do the Facebook Live, can you grab the recording after the fact? Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Um, through Standard. can you is, is it in there officially yeah. to download? If, if you go under, so what what we usually do is um, after it's over, if you go in the edit setting and there's mm -hmm. the little gear on the side, the settings. Um, under there, you can either download it in standard definition or high definition. Cool. Mm. Or if you if you're using a phone, because I think you, you could download it straight to your device yeah, too. Yeah. Oh, that's you cool. Don't feel like yeah, you have to. Like, but you don't have to. No. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Like I, I've noticed. That because that, that's my preferred method primarily because it's easy. I don't have to know all of the video and you, stuff that you, you do. You have that localized video as opposed to what went out on stream that could be like weird and buffery. Yeah. Yes. So and, if they're doing if you're doing side by side, you that could be questionable. That, that could, could be, be questionable, <clears throat> or you know, is it one of those things? Because the nice thing about what Google Hangout would do is you got basically the the sum of the best connections to google right mm -hmm. versus when we do stuff here it's the connections are as good as i can get to this studio from your side you're like we've had that discussion yeah you're pushing like like 1080 crazy webcam right i and, pushed or, 4K no before. you you, you push damn 4k <laughs> and i'm like yeah that's not happening here we can't handle that and and i'm getting a nice 480 connection from you you know wow. because we're using little hardware and, and things like that there's, there's there's other bottlenecks happening there uh, you know so 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 maybe the facebook thing would be like that who the the, the hangout thing mm -hmm. where it's my connection to facebook their connection to facebook we had the best of both worlds mm -hmm. as long as i'm good from here to facebook we have a good video and I was thinking too for for you if you then wanted to download it you could throw it up on some kind of podcast service and mm -hmm. turn yeah. it into a downloadable yep. yes. podcast yes. as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is something we've we've talked about and have never really gotten around to doing, but um maybe <laughs> maybe it's maybe this fall. Maybe this fall. There's, there's certainly a lot of questions um and and you wonder about what, you know, what will the quality be uh but um just the, the the chance to do everything within the, the the Facebook infrastructure is is intriguing. It's it's a sure. it's a nice infrastructure, and, and you know. Thing, so. We've we've had this discussion before um, with regard to Facebook versus YouTube. Uh, Facebook is really nice because you have the chat integration right there. Like we're we're yeah. using it for our shows right now, and Matt Weller just killed me with with his comment in the chat room, um, and I can actively see what people are saying. There's a slight delay, yeah. but by the time that we're talking what we're talking about here. Give it a couple of minutes. The chat room's picking up on what they're talking about. And Brandon's actually chiming in. Uh, I think if people who follow you need to go click on the notification button so they know when you're live. And that's really nice, too, with Facebook because it pops yes. up in the bottom. Yes. So and so is live. And I can just click or I can just dismiss it. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a great feature as far as that's concerned. Did you just see Matt's comment? Uh, yeah, too? no, no, no. I'm, I'm oh. catching up on some of the stories in here. There's one here that I didn't see from before. Uh, we're going to talk about porn in a moment. <laughs> but first, you like that for a tease? Uh, but first, Chilla, there were some announcements from Microsoft. Uh, there's a new Service Pro. 
and I was just listening to it uh, while I was going to pick up pizza this afternoon and uh, or this evening. And uh, uh, apparently, the people are not happy with the USB situation. And yeah, I mean, I'm personally not. I don't. I'm interested to hear what other people listen, have listen, to say. I just dropped <laughs> six hundred bucks to fix a 2013 laptop, so I didn't have to buy dongles for a new MacBook. Okay, so I, there's an issue here. Mm-hmm. So, but 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 Microsoft feels the pain too, apparently. So so what's going on with the new Surface Pro that they announced in Shanghai today? I think. Yeah. So it was interesting. They didn't announce it at the education event they announced it in shanghai um looks like the device is gonna have pretty much the same form factor there's additional tilt to the 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 hinge or whatever you want to call it that'll actually allow it to lay down almost flat to the point so you can use the surface style which i thought was kind of a cool way to incorporate Mm -hmm. that um all the way up through and this i thought was pretty impressive all the way up through the i5 version so the that will be completely fanless. So they've gotten heat dispersion throughout the device without need for a fan. There still will be a fan in the i7 because they really expect expect people to push it to the limits. Um, But they improved the battery life 50%, so 13 and a half hours. Um, Optional 4G LTE, which I thought was pretty impressive. So as as a Windows device, being able to just take it on the road and it's cellular connected wherever you need to go. Um, more pressure points with the Surface Pen. Whoop de doo! I'm sure some people are into that. That's not something. There's huge some for artists. Me. There's some artists out there that's like, yes, yes. yeah. There, I'm sure there's plenty. But front-facing cameras blacked out to fade into the bezel. I, I guess it. I'm not used to noticing it. I guess maybe it was an eye. I mean, even on the Surface One and Surface RT, it wasn't that odd to look at i mean somebody noticed it i guess someone was upset so, somebody in design noticed it of course we're getting alcatara or yeah alcant alcantara type covers um yippee yippee um <laughs> <laughs> i love this enthusiastic <laughs> like this is this is a microsoft thing because I, I used to listen to windows where uh, at least semi regularly listen to the windows weekly and they would just like like stats 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 eh. and like is this just <laughs> Like from still covering Microsoft after all these but, years. But, uh, no, like I think the core, the Core i5 without a fan, I think is is something that they took to the next level. I mean, not Absolutely. no one else is Absolutely. running an i5 with no fan. Absolutely. The 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 fifty percent battery improvement, I think, is huge for that device. Um, I'm noticing, I'm noticing from, and I don't know if this was a fact before, but it looks like the dial is in play that they showed off with the giant Surface Pro. Mm-hmm. That's what I was saying. The the hinge now it lays back. So at an angle, so it's meant for you to use the dial right so the dial on the device. Right there. And, and the dial is like it, it's you put it on the screen and you turn it and it works like a dial function, like for I, I don't know settings or something like that. Well, whatever. it's not just settings. So think about um, if you're you can use it in Photoshop and have your tools on a dial, right? So if you're working between two tools with the pencil, you literally have your left hand on the dial and you're just rotating left and right. Or if you want to pick. Um, line weight or pen thickness. Mm-hmm. I mean, you just turn that dial, and it gives you that click by click point. Versus, you know, usually you either have to move the slider and then move it back and then move it back again, and then you get frustrated and you go up and type type in the number you want. And it's right, not right. 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 It's now that, you just it's a it's, it's that a, tactile feedback kind of thing. It's another it's another point of of, of tactile feedback, but right? I, but I feel like, like it's a point of ex- being able to get exact on certain right, things, right? Right. So, you know, much like I'm like, I, I can't operate without a, a, a magic pad yeah. with with, uh, with um, MacBooks now. And it's weird, too, because you bring that up. That's how I feel now. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want to go back to <laughs> what the is mouse. this? I can't. What What is this arcane device that I'm, I have in my hand? People you know? <laughs> look at me like I am crazy that I would even want to use a trackpad to do right, things. And I'm right. like, I don't know how you do things on that because mm-hmm, <laughs> I've mm-hmm. gotten so used to pinch and zoom and certain certain and as you get into just certain, gestures especially but. creative i think because it's it's for me it's final cut right mm-hmm. it's, it's it's just existing in final cut and and getting around the arbison because i know the gestures and everything like that they've apple's trained me after all these years and <laughs> having <laughs> having a macbook since 2009 so i'm used to that and i got all the features that goes and now i can't roll back and well, now i'm stuck with macbooks well, it's funny because coming from a surface and i have i have an older surface uh, i mean it's the surface 2 it's the old form factor screen the trackpad on it's like this it's like two by three it's mm-hmm. tiny oh absolute crap and, and someone said i was talking about the macbook 
just a regular MacBook. And I'm like, they enlarged the size of the trackpad. And they're like, you need a bigger trackpad than you have now. And I'm like, yes, yes, I do. If you could give me a eight and a half by 11 trackpad, we'd be good to go. I mean, <laughs> if you could, if I could turn my iPad into a trackpad oh. while I'm working, that's pretty cool. And I've, I've done that with duet display and things of like that and Astro pad, mm -hmm. but Sorry, back to the Microsoft thing. Uh, well, there's a <laughs> comment actually along with this since we were talking about the dial. Uh, Matt's in the chat room saying there's not enough room with that Venetia. Uh, he, he, he corrected that. It's tiny, tiny ass. ash. Oh, oh, I thought that was whatever he said before. Uh, with that tiny ass screen to use the gigantic dial in Photoshop. Well, that, that's one of the things that surprised me too. So the dial pad or the dial doesn't have to be used on screen. It can be used just sitting just on, on the, the table. table. So there's a picture of it on the screen. So it's not necessarily it has to be on screen in a location. Um, which apparently is the desktop, according to this picture. Uh, so I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> Changing the color of the hue of your Windows logo standard background. What's happening? I'm the, playing air hockey. Air hockey. Air, this is the air hockey. Um, but anyways. In, in addition to that, they got a, um, upgraded graphics in the core i7 model. And like I said, uh, support for on-screen surface style usage. Um, the interesting thing that came out of this was... And Microsoft has, has kept true on their promise. I got to give them credit for that. They said they are not leaving the Surface Connect port. The big deal when they, I think it was the Surface 3 came out, they swapped out the charge port on the side from the 1 and 2 and the RT, and they put in this new pin port for charging. Um, and it tied in with a lot of their docks. And their docks aren't docks like we always, like we think about them like it's something that closes in on the device there's one that's just a plug a breakout box but they do have the ones that kind of bind around the device and they all they're the, the form factor staying the same from a from a width perspective and the docks actually can can grow and shrink widthwise to to pin into the device um but to make sure that all of the people that have maybe you're upgrading from a three to the twenty, notice they it's not the Surface Pro five, it's the Surface Pro twenty seventeen. <laughs> if 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 that reminds you of any other this is, companies, you hear me <laughs> shaking my head over here. <laughs> yeah, right, 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 right. But but I will stay the iPad iPad what now? You yeah. Know, yeah, yeah. They they have stayed true to leaving the Connect. What what I thought was a a good story that they actually told about this was Panos Panay said. They, they had problems with the Surface 3 and people not bringing uh, the power brick that came with it that has enough wattage to charge the device. And people were frustrated because you get to a location and you pull out your whatever USB adapter plug you brought. And it's not the right wattage to be able to actually get enough power to the device to charge it quickly. Think about it. Think if you bring your phone charger with you to charge your iPad, right? It, you gotta like leave the screen either dim or powered off to even get it to trickle. Maybe charge overnight it'll yeah, charge. Overnight, on you're good. Yeah. It's a trickle. Um, yeah, we've all been there. No, the reverse is you bring the iPad power brick with you and it charges your iPhone twice as fast. But, everything, everything. Mm. So, but he he brought up. I mean, it, it made a good point that the the power brick is a 65 or 75 watt brick, Jeez. um, which is which is in line with the newer MacBook Pros, um. So, but the interesting thing they did say was they're making a dongle <laughs> for the Surface Connect port, and the new Surface Connect port behind the scenes is actually US is Thunderbolt three USB C behind the channel, so it can do power display all of that stuff. Hold on, I go hold on. A they're just hold leaving the different. I, I, I got to take one moment. Crap, are you keeping up with this? Uh, you look pained, Mike. You, you look <laughs> well. I, I'm just impressed that this is like as as complicated as the dongle situation over on the <laughs> Apple side. It feels. I think we should just stop there. So we just there's some issues. Can we just? Leave uh, yeah, I don't know if there's issues. It's just that there's the decision they made. On. There's an interesting. Yeah, and there's uh there's like what like uh, no USB Cs and no USB C one USB A. Um, yeah, probably probably USB three. Yeah, remember, but. micro SD card uh mini display port so it's out it's powerful you're gonna need some connectors uh but the, the, the anything in this kind of form factor you got yeah you kind of goes without saying all right let's get to the promise point <laughs> i said. didn't know there was promise point. yeah it's what i that was deleted to uh, okay. you. <laughs> i didn't know we found something yes oh, I, I, I oh we have something on there deck. was questions i had to do it 
<laughs> Katie. <laughs> Fans, <laughs> what's going on? Hey, I've seen this one. I know. I thought that was... <laughs> Wait, in person? <laughs> <laughs> so, Sorg, if you travel to Europe, you might have something fun to play with. <laughs> uh... <laughs> um, so something they're trying to develop and partner with hotels is virtual reality pornography could be available in thousands of European hotel rooms within six months. So you're gonna have a little hell, little VR setup in your room. <laughs> I don't know if I want to use that VR oh, headset. I can't, it's like, I'm thinking pink eye. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, who wants to put that on their face? Yeah, like, like are they going to like hose that down in I between? Don't know. Or It just sounds I awesome. just shared, you know, head headgear seems the best. My favorite quote, I believe every male guest will want to try out an adult movie in VR. Or maybe, I mean, it has to be. Like, it has to be disposable. <laughs> Like Google Cardboard uh, that's, something, gotta, right? Yeah, it's got to be. It's got to be. Yeah. It's got to be. It's, mm -hmm. um, oh, there's a video. Should I bother? Should I? I didn't even watch it, so I can't even. It's, 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 it's something. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so, it, <laughs> as a hotel, you don't, like, is it a certain kind of hotel or am I going to find this in the Hyatt? Uh, well, right now they, I guess they're in, they're conversing. The company is working with three hotels in the U.S., but they don't say which ones. Mm -hmm. They believe in ten years. Within ten years, every hotel in Europe and U.S. will have permanent VR goggles that will remain in each room. Well, but they're they're also talking about offering a VR channel, so you would have to bring your own cardboard and you know use your phone that you can connect to it. But so this is like Southwest, <laughs> where you have to bring your own uh, tablet in order to watch the the free television. Yeah. Um, well, okay. That I could get, and, and, and this is this is this is something this is, you know. And what did I say before the last trip? I was like, should I bring my VR headset with me? You know, in case I get bored. Then I realized I had like zero internet, uh, but you can still play video games. Uh, you know, just for something different because you're not going to watch free HBO. To be honest, um, there's nothing, anything, never anything good on. Uh, but but you you know it it it. It makes sense. It makes sense for, for something to be attractive, I guess. But again, this is like, I feel like this is the thing that I find in the hotel room in Bangkok as opposed to like a, a regular, like, there were condoms in the wet bar. We were definitely not in the, it, we're definitely in a certain type of neighborhood when we stayed there. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it, it's, 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 it's an attraction of, of sort. So, uh, <laughs> it does, you okay over there? It does say that they, when introduced, you're, you'll be given. You'll be able to pay to be given access to a channel and get the password for your mobile phone, and then that would allow them to use Google so Cardboard to start. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So yeah. So the, the, these it's are disposable. These are disposable. These were here. Like, fold this together. Well, yeah. Hopefully, <laughs> well, no, it's pre-folded, pre right? That's the version now. Like that's yeah. going to be like now, but in the future, it'll be like solid. So VR setup in the room. So it turn, sounds like turn down service now includes they will fold your Google <laughs> cardboard. <laughs> It's a new skill set. It's a new skill set out there. Well, on that point, we promised porn when we delivered uh, <laughs> VR, virtual reality, pornography, coming to a hotel. Uh, so look look forward to that, business travelers. Uh, I swear, if this ends up, yo, know, what if you find if you have a if you find a Google Cardboard in like a two star hotel, do you touch it? Yeah. No, 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 no. That's a rule number one. Uh, bring wet naps. Um, anyways. Uncle Crappy, thank you for joining us here <laughs> once thank again. You, thank you for having me out. Thank you for the pizza. It's always, yes, always yes, nice I am awesome openly thing. bribing people with pizza to get in the studio these days. It works. It works. Yes, absolutely. Um, please tell everybody where they can find your stuff. Uh, you can find my stuff on Twitter at Mike Pound PG or at Uncle Crappy, depending on um, which kind of subject matter you want. Uh, to check out the beer show, post com slash beer me. Please go, uh, please go take a look. This is, this is the I keep going on this shot, and it just looks like the opening credits to Friends. I don't know. Is, that's what that's what I should just. That's, is that what? That's, no, it's no. no. <laughs> uh, John Chichilla, Chilla Tech on Chilla Tech dot, uh, dot some, net dot net. I dot knew it wasn't. Net. I knew it wasn't dot com. That's okay. <laughs> so. It's all good. Chilla on the Twitters. Chilla, 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 Chilla five seven nine on the Instagram. Chilla photo on the DeviantArt. You going to Wizard World soon, right? I'm actually skipping Philly this what? this year. They I wasn't I, early on. They didn't have a big enough panels and guests for me to be overly interested. They've added a bunch recently. Yeah. Um. Yeah. yeah. But it's we've made. You need that runway. I'm going to Nashville this weekend, and nice. then I'm and then Carla's actually headed to New York City two weeks after that. So it's 
we're not going to wedge that in between. So I'm actually looking at I'm actually looking at, at Carla if you're listening and you want to go to Chicago. Um, Wizard World Chicago looks pretty cool. There you go. There but you it's go. in August. I, I would say um, I, I recommend. I was in Nashville a year ago. Get some hot chicken. I uh, had that with uh, Carla it's like when mm-hmm. I was down there visiting. Mm-hmm. Good, so, good breweries down there too. Good breweries as well. So enjoy that. Cool. Uh, nice. I love that town. I want to get back to that town. Uh, Katie Dude is Katie Dude is on the Twitter Scarehouse Podcast, and you do the Facebook Live with Scarehouse every Thursday, I believe. Friday at noon. Friday at noon. Every <laughs> that's judging a, you. That's a different time zone. Sure. Um, <laughs> exactly. Every so. Friday. At what did noon. you What did you guys do last week? Uh, we were actually in the basement because we talked about our paranormal investigation that we were going to have Saturday night, but we had you know that we had on Saturday nights. So we talked about uh, our building and how haunted it was, and then we were taking we were answering audience questions, which was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it was it's good. You can interact with us. We like to talk. Has the nervousness gone away from doing Facebook Live? Better now. Mm-hmm. It's I have a routine. I still have my sheet of paper where I'm like, I do this at the beginning, I do this at the end. There you go. Because <laughs> I tried to mark cross my T's and dot my eyes. Well, yes. if you need a producer, we have a good one available here. Aww. Aww. No. See, he's still making up from. Yeah, he, he's still making up for <laughs> a few weeks ago. <laughs> that time I slept down here on the couch. Uh, <laughs> producer Missy, I rebellious flaw on the Twitter. Hi. Uh, yeah, and you can actually catch me and Katie IRL Thursday. <gasps> oh, that's right. Ooh. Ooh. I know. <laughs> Uh, we have been invited to take part in a panel discussion with uh, Doug Durda. And Mike Wojcik as well for that panel. Mm-hmm. And we're going to be talking about social media and business. Mm-hmm. That's quite With, a lineup. Uh, that's, that's spectacular. EBU. What, the, the panel? Yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's going to be, it's gonna be uh, amazing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I've, seen this, I've seen this panel uh, discussion. Uh, uh, the dog. Uh, I've seen this panel discussion, <laughs> but usually over a few beers. Uh, so... <laughs> There's there that. Is, there, it's beer. There's a mixer beforehand. Oh, there is a mixer There's, before it. Oh, <laughs> fantastic. Are we, are, thank you for prepping us for that. Uh, yeah, you're, welcome. Exactly. you're welcome. This is really exactly. Uh, excuse, excuse our asthmatic dog that was uh, was right in the microphone, apparently. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, but uh, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. Everybody in the chat room, which is my iPad, uh, seemed to have died in the middle there. So thank you. I Off the top of my head, Wheels from his new uh, Studio Wheels location, uh, down there, Mananga, Haley, uh, Brandon, Matt, and uh, Chachi dropping in for a little bit as well. I know uh, Cynthia Klosky and Hi Mom was a part of there Aaron as Parkes well. Was also in there. What's that? Larry. Aaron Parkus. Thank was you, also Aaron Parkus was always also in there. I uh, think you guys can join us here again live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time, as long as I have no travel or technical or sickness issues, and uh, you can uh, become part of that. Uh, chat as well. Please uh, check out everything at awesomecast.com. Subscribe to us wherever you like to subscribe to things. And uh, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. Thank you to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.